Thanks, Brie. I'm That's like nervous about it because I hate <laughs> me <this> too. <laughs> hey, kids! It's Miss Sasha. Welcome back to art class. I'm super excited to be here today. Today we're going to talk about some things that makes living in Louisiana special, um, specifically crawfish. We're going to learn some fun crawfish facts and we're going to draw a crawfish using some simple directions, lines, and shapes. Louisiana is a southeastern state that is the true melting pot of cultures. We have French culture, African culture, French Canadian, and modern American. It's famous for its unique Creole and Cajun culture, food, jazz music, Mardi Gras festival, plenty other festivals, and you can also find fishing, state parks, and the New Orleans Saints. The crawfish became Louisiana State crustacean in 1983, and since then it's been a part of Louisiana's culinary heritage and our Louisiana lifestyle. What is culinary? Any good guesses? Culinary. Hmm. Some people go to culinary arts school. This relates to the kitchen or someone's cooking skills. Here in South Louisiana, we have crawfish boils. You have to know how to cook crawfish in order to make it a delicious, delicious meal. What is a crustacean? Any good guesses? Well, it's a large group of mostly water animals like crabs, lobster, and shrimp with a body made up of segments. Not quite like a dragonfly or an insect. It has a tough outer shell, two pairs of an antennas, and limbs that are jointed, meaning they can bend, kind of like our arms, right? Crawfish are invertebrates. This means they don't have bones, but they do have an, exo an exoskeleton pr to protect their inner body parts. The crawfish is not really a seafood. It's more of a freshwater shellfish that thrives in the mud of Louisiana's freshwater bayous. So where do crawfish live? Well, crawfish dig burrows in the mud for homes. We call them crawfish holes. Let's see, here's a crawfish hole right here. This is what the crawfish builds in order to live in it, right? They dig in the ground, piling up the mud. You can see them come up with mud and put it on the top. They crawl up the hole, put the mud on the top, right? It kind of looks like a chimney, like a cobblestone chimney more like. The holes can be up to two or three feet deep. It's pretty deep. I'm five foot four, so it uh, could be this tall. That's really, really a deep hole. They dig down for safety, but mostly to get water. Crawfish also hide under rocks, logs, and lily pads, right? Let's take a look at this. This is how people um, get crawfish. They have these crawfish nets that they place into ponds, right? And they catch the crawfish in these big nets. Here's a, um, like a crawfish tractor. It can go into the water and help to pick these up and also drop them off, right? So what do you think crawfish eat? They eat almost anything, even maybe dead animals. They need a lot of fresh water. And crawfish, you know, they're kind of opportunistic. They'll eat what they can find. So they'll even eat hot dogs if they're left on the ground and even cat food. That's a new fact I didn't know about, right? So here we go. Let's look at some more of these pictures. This is what we're going to draw today. Here is our crawfish, his whole body when he's spread out. This is crawfish. They put up their little arms. It's part of their defense, right? Here it is again. This is it from the side, so you can see um, the side view. They are symmetrical, meaning they're the same on both sides. Okay, and this is someone holding a crawfish. So you can kind of see what the size of the crawfish is if you were holding it. And of course, some crawfish can be bigger and some crawfish can be smaller, right? So the supplies that you're going to need today will be one piece of white paper, a black, brown, and a red crayon. Now is a good time to pause your video and gather all your supplies. 
Now that you've gathered all your supplies, go ahead and put your paper down in front of you and your crayons down at, at also. And let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna do a quick hand warm up, okay? So I want you to take your hands, wiggle them around, maybe shake it off, maybe flop them a little bit, flop and flap them. You could do a little wrist twist. We could do fingers one by one. Maybe you could put all of your fingers together. Push in, out, almost like your hands are doing a little push up, right? Perfect, we can do some windshield wipers. I'll let you pick one. Remember, keep your hands to yourself when you're doing this, right? Shake it off, and let's go ahead and get started. We have a lot to draw. We're gonna go step by step, so don't go ahead of me, okay? This is a lot of fun. This crawfish is really easy to draw because we're gonna talk about lines, shapes, and different directions. So I want you to go ahead and get your white piece of paper and put it in front of you vertical or tall, right? All right. We're going to make a fold in our paper so we know where the middle is. So grab the bottom of your paper by your belly, fold it up, make your corners meet, and then go ahead and press it down so you have a nice good crease or fold in your paper, okay? Perfect. When you're all done, I want you to go ahead and grab your black crayon. Awesome. If you need to peel your paper, sometimes I do. I use my black crayon a lot. Here we go. See, I like to keep paper on it so I, my hands, my little fingers have something to hold on to, right? Okay, we're gonna make a line, a horizontal line in the very middle of our paper, okay? I'm gonna find the middle and I'm gonna make a horizontal line. This line is gonna be too small. This is gonna determine the width of our crawfish's body, okay? So let's go ahead and make sure it's nice and wide. Good. Got it? If it's not wide enough, you can just make it a little bit wide. We don't want it this wide, because then our crawfish will be this big. Okay, make it nice and wide. Everybody got that? Give me a thumbs up. Good. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna find where the middle is from our line and the top of our paper. Is this the middle? I don't think so. How about over here? Is this the middle? How about is this the middle? In between our little horizontal line and the top of our paper, I want you to put a little dot. A little dot. Good job. We're going to now make a triangular shape to form the top of his, of his head. Okay, watch. How's that, right? Crawfish have a jointed head and thorax or a midsection. It's a segmented body and it can, and crawfish can come in different colors like sandy yellow, greens, reds, dark browns, and look at this, even blue. Look at this crawfish. It is blue. Pretty awesome, huh? All right, so this is our head part, right? The head has a sharp snout, which this will be his snout up here. Up here, I want you to put a little circle on this side and a little circle on this side. Those are gonna be our crawfish's eyes. And something interesting to know about a crawfish's eyes is that they're made up, they're called compound eyes. They're made up of more than one individual eye. They move independently from one another without moving their body. They have really good eyesight. That means their eyes can do kind of like this, right? Another animal that has a compound eye is a dragonfly or a wasp or a bee, but they're, they just have eyes all around. Crawfish can move them like this without moving their body. Kind of silly, huh? Okay, great. From the nose, the tip of the nose, I want you to do a little line that kind of comes down, a little straight line. 
okay? It doesn't have to go all the way. If it does, it's fine, okay? Perfect. Now we're gonna make the letter V underneath our little horizontal line, okay? I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna start, go on this side and go down this way. It makes a V or an upside down triangle. Perfect. Everybody with me? I know it looks like this crawfish is gonna be hard to draw, but it's so fun. And once you know how to draw, you can teach somebody else. Okay, underneath this triangle, we're gonna do a little horizontal line. It's not longer than this one, okay? And it's not touching the triangle, but if it does touch the triangle, that's okay. All right, you can even put a little number one down there if you want it to touch. That'll help you, right? Almost like a letter Y. Okay, now we're going to connect the body or the segments together. Watch. I'm gonna go from here to there and from here to there. We've just made this part of our crawfish's body, okay? Now crawfish have a lot more segments. This is the part of the crawfish tail that we eat, right? So it's a little bit longer and it's okay if it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't look exactly like a crawfish. We're just learning, right? So underneath here, we're gonna do like a little rectangle, what? One rectangle. They're not super skinny, and they're not getting wider, they're getting skinnier. Watch. We'll have another rectangle. You got it, and one more under there. I'm leaving room for the very bottom of his little tail, right? Crawfish have an exoskeleton. It's a body covering. It's thin, but it's really, really tough. So his little exoskeleton is very tough, right? Looks like it wouldn't be, but it is. Okay, now we're gonna add his little tail. This is the part that the crawfish uses to swim or to get away. If it's fearful of something, it will use its little tail almost like a little, like a little scoop, and it scoops its way across the, the bottom of the pond or the lake, right? Okay, we're gonna make a triangle underneath there, watch triangle we'll make these two outer pieces right here they're kind of a little curve line so look curve and curve you got it and we'll swoop it around watch it'll swoop around back up to our triangle around and back up to the triangle we just have to add two more little little curve lines to close up these two little holes right here watch curve and curve and there's his little tail right great let's go ahead and add our big pinchers right sometimes you can crack these open and get a little bit of crawfish meat in there after you've done your crawfish boil Otherwise, like these pinchers are used, you know, they, they will pinch you and it does hurt. Even though they're really small, they're really, really strong, right? They have, they have a set of pinchers and the pinchers are used for digging. They're used um, for digging the, the holes, right? In the mud, for eating food and protection, just like I said, right? And also know that the crawfish have two sets of antennas right for feeling around they sense danger with these antennas and they're they're trying to find their way around their surroundings or their environment and also know that they breathe through their little feather like gills underneath the crawfish's body he's got little feather like gills that he uses for breathing okay all right let's do his big big pinchers okay stay with me we're going to do one line at a time Right here on that first horizontal line that we drew, I want you to do two diagonal lines. Look, diagonal, diagonal, okay? You got that? 
Then I want you to put a little line towards his head. Look, watch. Like this and like this. It almost looks like he's standing like this, right? His arms are up, right? Two little diagonal lines. And then we're going to bring that line right back down to his little crawfish head. Not right to the corner, but a little bit above it. Watch. See how I went back to his head? Watch, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, okay? Look, right back to his head. It looks like he has sleeves on a shirt, but we know we're not done. We have to add his big, beautiful claws. Okay, the next part we're gonna make is this little, it's like a little rectangle or a little square, right? So, on the top of these two lines, going the same way, go line, 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 two, it's like a number 11. Okay, you ready for this? Close it up, watch, boop, boop, all closed. Okay, time to do his big pinchers, right? Okay, we're gonna do, it's almost gonna touch the top of the page, watch. Curve, curve on the outside, make two outside curves. One that goes this way and one that goes this way. Let's do the other side of his claw, this side, watch. Curve, curve. It's still open at the top. Okay, you ready? Watch me do this part. I want you to put your crayon on the top far right claw and I want you to just curve down and touch the line in the middle. Okay. And we're going to finish this claw up. Look. Close it up right there. Good job. We're going to do the same thing over here. Watch me. Start way up here and curve down. And then start up here and go down to there. We've made his pinchers. Look, look, his little pinchers. If you want to put some little zigzags on the outer edge, you can. They're little bitty. We can also add a little bit of texture, which is just don't bang your crayon, just some little black dots on his pincher because their shells are not smooth. They actually have these little tiny bumps, which is the texture or the way the crawfish's shell feels, right? So if we could touch this crawfish, it has little bumps. So the way that we can show bumps on our picture is by just adding some dots, like maybe a few down here under that little line, maybe a few on top of here, and some in there. All righty. You ready? Let's go ahead and do his little claws. Okay? Their arms are a lot like ours, even though ours aren't called segmented. Theirs are segmented, okay? It's like they have a shoulder, an elbow, and a wrist. And so we're going to do that for each little claw, okay? Our bumps right here are his shoulders. Here's his elbow and here's his wrist, okay? It's not really called that on a crawfish. We're just calling that so it's easy to draw. Okay, right underneath this big claw right here, go ahead and put a curve line. Remember, whatever we do on one side of the crawfish, we have to do on the other side of the crawfish. So underneath this arm, go ahead and put a little bump. Good. And right down here, close to the tail part, right above there, I want you to put a bump, one on each side. We're gonna add one in the middle, so leave a little bit of space in the middle, okay? And add one more. So on your crawfish's body, he should have three bumps on each side underneath his big long arms, three bumps, okay? Okay, let's do this. We're gonna make some little rectangles, watch. On each bump, we'll call it shoulder, I want you to put, um, 
I want you to put a little rectangle. Whoops, look, rectangle and rectangle. Three skinny rectangles. That's this part of our crawfish's arm or leg. There's our legs. We have arms, right? Perfect. Now the next thing on this side is we're going to add another rectangle to each one. Look, one, two, three. You see it coming together? I think a crawfish really has four little legs. We're gonna leave it at three just because it was easier to fit. But if you were to draw another one, you could add four if you'd like. On the end of that, let's go ahead and put a little triangle, tiny little triangle. Well, we have to do the other side just like this one, right? What do we do first? Anyone remember? We already have the shoulders. We need to add the rectangles for this part of the arm. Watch. One, two, three. You add your skinny little rectangles now. You know, crawfish are also called crawdads, mud bugs, crayfish, craydids, freshwater lobsters, mountain lobsters, or yabbies. Never heard of that before. We call them crawfish or crawdads here in Louisiana. Okay, let's add another little rectangle to each leg. Look, one, two, three. Got it? Perfect. What's the last thing we have to do to our leg to finish him up? Do you remember? If you said triangle, you are right. A little triangle on the end, just like that. Okay? So we're going to add a few more things to our crawfish, a few more dots or texture. I'm going to add some to his body or his tail and maybe even some down here to his little flipper, right? I'll let you add a few more dots while you're doing that. Um, crawfish are cousins to the lobster. Lobsters are really big and they have much bigger claws than crawfish, but they're cousins, right? When a baby crawfish is born, they look just like an adult crawfish, only they're tiny, tiny, tiny. They leave their mom's protection like two or three, about one or two weeks after they're born right? And then they hatch from their little eggs and the crawfish reaches adult size in about three to four months, right? And they only live for about three to eight years long. Not that long, but go ahead and add some more dots. Crawfish walk forward. They always walk forward and they move backwards when they swim. Remember we talked about it kind of grabs the water like a little, a little spoon almost and kind of flitters through the water. Okay, when you're all done adding your dots, you can go ahead and get brown. I want you to watch me for a second. I'm just adding some brown here and there just to add a little bit more color. I'm going to do it on the side of here, maybe down the arms, maybe a little bit here. Okay. Go ahead, we're not coloring it in brown, we're adding some brown detail. So go ahead with your crayon and add a little bit of brown detail wherever you think it needs to go. Just a little bit here and a little bit there, okay? When crawfish sense movement or danger, it raises its pinchers and it arches its back, just like in these pictures. You see, you can see this from the front. And this is from the side, so you can see it arching its back. That means to push its back kind of like that little arch, right? They curl their tails under and shoot backwards in the water. We talked about that. The crawfish also defend their territory by pinching intruders. And they back up to show that they're really strong, right? They put their arms up to look bigger and scarier to things that are trying to get them. Um, there is a crawfish called a dwarf crawfish. It's very, very small. Okay, good. Go ahead and keep adding your brown. We didn't add a background to our crawfish because today we're just learning how to draw a crawfish. If you want to add a background to yours, you surely can a little bit later. 
But I'm going to go ahead and grab my red now. And when I go ahead and grab my red, I'm not going to press too hard. I'm going to go lightly because remember, you can always come back. I'm going to show you on this crawfish claw. Watch this. I came back and I added some darker spaces to my crawfish, right? So if you color it really, really dark, then you can't add any more detail or show like shadowing or shading or make him look a little rounder instead of so flat, right? So you can go ahead and pretty much color your whole crawfish with that red, right? I'm gonna color this one, I'm gonna color it lightly. I had to remind myself because I was starting to color it too dark. And when I color it too dark, then I don't have any room to add detail, right? Like I might color his head really light and then come back in the middle and make it dark red or on the sides, right? See that? I did it light red and then I came back and added some detail. I'm gonna do that with the tail too. See that? It's kind of hard to add, to not push hard sometimes. And on these tiny little legs, I'm not gonna add any detail. You can always come back to and add some more red dots on there, right? Good. Sometimes on my background, I'll add the plants called cattails or some lily pads. Maybe I'll add some water, make it look swirly, right? Um, you could add some rocks, some grasses, anything on your little background works pretty nice for that. Um, today was really great. We learned about what makes Louisiana special, specifically our crawfish, and we learned some fun crawfish facts and drew a crawfish using some simple directions, lines, and shapes. Louisiana lifestyle is really, really unique. So you should check into some of the things that we offer here in Louisiana, like our festival, our food, different cultures, our Creole food. Oh, the, it, it's endless, right? So I hope to see y'all next week. Thank you so much.